SARS-CoV-2 is the virus that causes COVID-19, the respiratory disease that's been ravaging the world. The virus is so tiny, it can only be viewed through an electronic microscope. It's about 80 to 120 nanometers in diameter, about one thousandth the width of an eyelash. Scientists around the world have been studying what the virus does to our cells, hoping to better understand it and eventually defeat it. Here's what we know so far. By sequencing, people have actually discovered literally hundreds of coronaviruses, but the main ones which affect humans are the what we, the seasonal ones, the NL63, the Hong Kong U1, the 229E, and then we have these three moderately severe ones, uh, the SARS, the MERS, and now this new one. They're called coron because the Latin word means crown, because when people looked at them using electron microscopy, they found there was these little spikes or, cr or crowns which surrounded the virus. Now these spikes are what the virus uses to attach to cells. So all the coronaviruses structurally look uh, very much similar. Uh, all they differ in is their makeup or their genetic material. A virus, by and large, can't replicate itself. It needs a cell to do it. For most viruses to get into the human body, they need something called receptors. The new coronavirus works the same way. This virus uses a receptor which is called ACE2, which stands for angiotensin converting enzyme 2. Um, this is a receptor which is present um, mainly in the respiratory tract, but also in the gastrointestinal tract. And so what happens is that this spike protein, remember that's what gives the virus its structure, the spike protein is what uh, binds to this ACE2 receptor. The new coronavirus targets specific cells in our nose, mouth, eyes, gut and intestine where it can find ACE2 receptors to unlock the cell. Once the virus enters, it hijacks the cell and turns it into a virus-producing factory. It fuses its lipid membrane with the membrane of the cells and releases its genetic material called RNA. The infected cell reads the RNA and begins making proteins that keep the immune system at bay and proteins that allow the assembly of copies of the virus. Then the newly assembled copies are carried to the outer edge of the cell and can go on to infect other cells. Within well, one square micrometer, you can get 1,600 viral particles. So each cell will, can produce up to about 600,000 viral particles. Some viruses, when they actually replicate in the cell, they will kill the cell. And that's what's called a cytopathic effect. And that can actually then lead to some of the symptoms. But what we've found is that this virus is not very toxic or not very, it doesn't cause that much of a cytopathic effect for a long period. In influenza, it can start killing the cell within a couple of days. But this virus uh, seems to not kill the cell for about five to six days. And this means that the patient may then be having virus replication, but because it's not killing the cell, there can, there can be very few uh, clinical symptoms. And that's why it's been found that what's called the asymptomatic carriers. But as the infection progresses, many patients develop typical flu symptoms like fever, dry cough, and tiredness, as well as atypical symptoms like a loss of smell and taste. This is the immune system fighting to clear the virus. When the infected person coughs or sneezes, virus-containing droplets can be emitted on nearby people and surfaces. The coronavirus can survive on different surfaces for several hours to several days, but it's vulnerable and easy to kill. So many of the common uh, alcohols uh, and, the, and the bleaches, they can alter the pH and alter the surface or the outsides of this virus, which basically able to disrupt the, uh, the envelope, therefore not making it infectious. And then there is the environment. So studies which have been done by colleagues in our institution show that this virus is actually temperature sensitive. So at four degrees Celsius, the virus is, can remain very stable for a very long period of time. At 25 degrees Celsius, it remains stable for about five days. At 35 degrees, stable for one to two days. And at 56 degrees, for about maybe 30 minutes. So the warmer the environment, the less stable it is. Currently, there is no effective treatment for the virus. Recovery depends on if the immune system can develop antibodies to recognize the virus's structure and then destroy the virus, helping fight off the disease. And that's why people talk about the herd immunity, is that once you get enough of the population which has been exposed to the virus and which has the antibodies, 
then that will then decrease the spread of the virus from person to person. So that's why some people think that we'll have to wait until we get enough people becoming infected that we get the herd immunity. But that's going to take a long, long period of time. So the alternative is to then bring in these vaccinations so that if you can vaccinate people, then you can basically build up, hopefully, enough immunity to stop the transmission from person to person. Developing a vaccine that proves safe and effective may take a year or more. Medications to fight the disease may be available sooner, but there's no quick fix to arrest the pandemic. So the only way for potentially getting this virus under control is going to be the social ways, social mechanism, which is social distancing, quarantining, and keeping and basically a rigid attention to personal hygiene and to, your, and to uh, the environmental hygiene. Many people who have been infected with COVID-19 have recovered. Some governments suggested that people who have antibodies to the coronavirus could be issued an immunity passport that would allow them to travel or return to work. But the World Health Organization said catching COVID-19 once may not protect you from getting it again. The use of such immunity passports may increase the risk of continued transmission.